Hey guys, it is a beautiful day in the North Main Woods, and I thought I'd bring you along. I am just through the St. Francis checkpoint in St. Francis, Maine, and we're going through, I'm going to attempt to get all the way through to Rocky Brook Road. I think my first attempt I'll try via Hughes Brook Road. I'm not sure, though, if I'll be able to get all the way through. So if I can't get through on Hughesbrook Road, depending on how far I get down before I figure that out, I may come back out and try uh, Jacques Ouellette Road. Um, I haven't been down that way yet this year or this snowy season. I know I can't get through by the Red River Road um, because there's a big washout and I went down there just last weekend and it's quite a drop off. I, I would be afraid that I'd kind of bottom out with my car. Um, so we're not going to risk that. Um, so we're just going to kind of cruise down this road because I know it's maintained and I don't have to worry about that. Hughesbrook might not be maintained, so we're going to just check it out. And we'll play it by ear and see what happens. Thanks for joining me, guys. So we are going to check out Hughesbrook Road. It does look like they are logging out here. We'll see how it looks when we get in here. So I believe, you know, actually I'm not positive on the mileage of this road. I'll have to wait till I see the first mile marker and then I should be able to tell you a little bit better. So let's hang tight and see what we can find out here. We've got some good fresh moose tracks. Can see these darker colors here. They're all over the place. So it's mile 30 that you come out on here or you turn on to. So we are mile 30 on the Hughesbrook Road, which means we will travel this road for 30 miles. And we will connect on to Rocky Brook Road uh, from there. So hopefully we can make it. Um, like I said, I haven't been on this road yet this season. So I don't know how it is all the way through. We had a big thaw, though. So we had a little flooding. And a lot of the brooks and water just got so over full that it flooded out on the roads. So we'll see if it's passable all the way through. I'm hoping it is. Um, but the alternative road would be to continue on down the St. Francis Road. Excuse me, I just went to reposition um, the camera. So we could continue down to the St. Francis Road and then on to the Rocky Brook Road from there. But the end of St. Francis Road, I think, is about 46 miles. I'm not positive, don't quote me, but it's 40-something miles. And then we would travel down the Rocky Brook Road for so many miles and so on and so forth. So I just felt like this would have been the less miles way to kind of do a loop, which was my intent today. So my intent is to come out the Portage Checkpoint and to head home from there. I do apologize, these roads are extremely bumpy um, and I don't have a fancy uh, stabilizer on my camera. So you get what you get, but you do have a pretty good idea of the beauty of this area and what you'll see when you come out. So this is also um, 
another way to get to Rocky Brook Falls. So that is at about mile 16 and a half off of this road. So just a, another tip, you know, if you are thinking about going to the falls, you can get there from St. Francis if you go this way. Or you can get there through the Portage Gate, or you can get there through the Winterville Gate. I'm just, I'm just noticing here, we're at mile 26, T16 R9. I've got to look to see what body of water is down there because there is a body of water down there and I don't know what it is. Hmm, curious. You can see it gets pretty close to the road. What is that, I wonder? Oh yeah, I mean the water goes right to here. Hmm. Okay. Where is that? There's a little road here to the left, but... Or maybe it's not a road. No, it looks like they just plowed it more. I thought there was a road up here. They just plowed it wider. Jeez, I'm going to have to look at the map and see where that is. Weird. Okay, I'll have to figure that out. I wonder if this road might lead to it. Let's see what this road sign says. Ah, Pelletier Lake Connector Road. So I wonder if that was Pelletier Lake. I'm going to have to look at the map. I'm guessing that was Pelletier Lake. Tons of free grass, swamp grass. People pay big bucks for that stuff for decor. <laughs> we get it free. I just got to back up for a minute. <laughs> I just saw a nice fresh bit of sign. Oh shush. A couple of branches broken off up there like clear off. Right there. Can you see that? Can you see it? Alright. Hmm. My car is telling me that there's possible icy roads. <laughs> oh, sugar plums. Alright. Well, that is a whole tower. Of swamp grass. I love that stuff. I have some at my house. <laughs> People pay big dollars for it. It's all free. And a tip if you want to keep it so that it doesn't kind of all those things don't blow away on you. You can spray it with like a clear um, spray paint or anything just to kind of hold on to it a spray adhesive, whatever you have, it will help. Now I know the chances of me finding a moose shed by a drive-by is pretty slim to none. But I can't help but look. <laughs> I can't help it. what I see. I'm going to back up because I see some more back here. Lots of critter sign. Oh, oh, there's a freaking pine marten right there. Holy cows, can you see him? Hi, cutie pie. Hi, little cutie. 
Oh my god, there's a freaking Pine Martin. What are you doing, cutie patootie? Oh my goodness! Hi! Come see me! Oh, hi, cutie pie! <laughs> so, you guys got to be a part of me actually seeing a Pine Martin for the first time. Because that was one of the animals up in the North Main Woods that I haven't seen before. He's so cute. My camera's not picking him up well, but he's just bounding through the forest. Oh my gosh, that was incredible. Okay, well let's go back and see the rest of the sign that I saw, which is right here. That's what made me stop. I just want to walk in there and go see him real quick. I know him. Hold on. Alright, so I saw him down here. He's in this tree. Right here. Let's go see what his little tracks look like. <laughs> oh, he's so cute! I can't wait! I'm so glad I saw one. I'm just going up a little further to see if he's still up here. Nope. He's gone. Let's go check out his cute little tracks. I sink here a little bit, but that's okay. Good thing we don't have a ton of snow right now. I can do this. Oh, <laughs> <Little> buddy! <laughs> oh, he was so cute, just bounding through here. I wish my camera picked it up. Nope, there's his little twax. You can't really see paws or anything. <laughs> oh, he was so cute. The snow's so fluffy that you can't really see his tracks. That was pretty cool. <laughs> All right, let's get back on the road. <laughs> so I got to see a snow bunny and a pine martin. I've never seen a pine martin, so you guys just got to be part of a first for me. <laughs> we'll go check out these little chewings. I'm just going to go up here because it looks like there's some more tracks. Yeah, he was hopping all around here. <laughs> what a cutie pie. Look at these little babies! <laughs> oh, that's a good one. You can kind of see his pads on that one. Kind of, sort of. An old larch tree going to sleep. Camera. Look at his little feeties everywhere. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, that was cool. All right. <laughs> Back to the car. This stretch of the road is Sign City, all the way up there. And what's cool about the ones up there is they're really tall. So I'm actually going to pull the car over right here, and we're going to go check those out in person. Yes, I know. I'm, I'm just parking. <laughs> My car hates me. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to zoom back out so that you can get a clearer picture. We're just here on this sharp corner. It looks like mile 21. And I just noticed a ton of rubs and uh, scrapes, and I just wanted to come check it out. Looks like there's a moose track right here. I might break through this, we'll see. And it looks to be a bull moose that was walking this way. So he was up here this morning, is my guess, because it's a really fresh track. So I'm just going to kind of follow his 
root, if you will, and see if this bad boy might have left me a present. <laughs> uh, I just love, love, love that. That's a real good size bowl. We're going to have prickers and cockaburgers and all kinds of things stuff to us, but that's all part of the fun. You see the rubs way up there, up here. They're not just down low, and they're not just kind of chewing the bark off. He's trying to get those antlers off is what he's doing. <laughs> Alright, which way did you go, buddy? This way. <clears throat> Right up here. It's funny because that's where I saw all these rubs, and he literally just did those. Because his tracks are going down the hill from there. That's pretty impressive. I noticed there's some out here too. So that's interesting. This one specific set of tracks, though, goes right up here all these really, really fresh breaks. Like, really fresh. <laughs> and you can see, hopefully you can see, all the stuff's turned up here. He left a hair. A little calling card there. Actually, there's some more hair here. You can see this it just broke right off all up here. Oops, there's an older set of dookies. A lot more hair. This looks like a common ground. It looks like they spend some time here because you can see some of these older breaks. You can tell that one's older. So this could be a family marking its territory. I'm just going to go up here just a smidge. I don't see too many further up. I'm just going to get a nice look around. See if I see any shed sticking up out of the ground. Let's go check out, see if <clears throat> there's any fresh tracks over this way. Let's see, there's a nice good full track there. Let's see my hair. And that looks like it's coming from this way, which is the other spot that I noticed all those fresh breaks. Yeah, that's a really good size, good size bowl. <clears throat> I think he got pissed at the pucker brush there. It's all thrown around. Yeah. I'll have to come back to this spot. It's obvious they're still trying to scra scrape something. So maybe they still have their antlers. As you can see, these are pretty fresh. So I'll have to come back in a couple weeks or so and see if there's anything down here. <laughs> Alright guys, let's hit the road. You can see it's also having some little nibbles here. Got a lot of fresh chewings on the buds. Alright, gonna have to put that in the memory bank. Mile marker 21 off the Hughesbrook Road. Let's look for some sheds. And actually, uh, when I plan on it, I'll actually put more time into going all the way up and around that little knoll there. Just kind of walk the edge of it. See what I find. So temperature-wise, it's about 10, I think, degrees. Maybe more, I'm not sure, but not too, too much more. 
So it is pretty chilly, and I just wanted to kind of note that I'm still wearing my lacrosse kind of muck type boots, and I'm still really pleased with them. Um, I was a little nervous because you know, the plastic type boots get pretty cold in winter. But if you have the right socks, I think that they work great. My feet are totally dry, totally warm. And I have a thin pair of merino wool socks with a cotton pair over top. Yep, so it's mile 21. All right guys, so we just passed where Rocky Brook Falls pull off is, where the trailhead is. And we are now going down Hughesbrook Road. We're on mile marker 16 now. We've just made it to mile marker 16. And I've decided that I'm going to go home through the Winterville Gate instead of going out Rocky Brook Road. I'm going to give it a try and see how the road is. I know it is not in great shape, um, so it is a little bit uh, concerning. But I'm going to do my best. It's easy and worst case scenario. I turn around and I can back out Rocky Brook Road. So for those of you who want to join me, you are more than welcome. I'm going to go ahead and show you some along the way, of course. Um, and for those who don't, thank you so much for joining me. And I hope you had a great adventure. This is I. We're just going over Rocky Brook. I love those greens and I don't know if the camera is picking them up, but it's so pretty. Let's see if we can see the other side. It's pretty pretty too. Alright, let's continue on down and I will take you through the Winterville Gate. Okay, so I'm locking it in four-wheel drive. We are coming into the Winterville Gate. Now this gate is unmanned, so during the season if you do come through this gate you have to fill out paperwork and call in uh, your name and the paperwork number, etc. So this is the Winterville checkpoint. We're just going to mosey down here and I'll show you a little bit of this way as well. This is an extremely rough road in the spring, summer, and fall. The only time it is halfway decent is in the winter when the snow has somewhat filled in some of the craters along this road. It doesn't get maintained and it's just a terrible, terrible road. <laughs> um, so I'm taking you on it during its best time, so keep that in mind. Looks like there were some trees down, so some folks had cut them. That's nice of them. Thank you guys, whoever did that. We'll check out this brook here. This is also a portion of Rocky Brook. I just love that green. It is so pretty. Let's see, let's see the other side. Pretty nice. It's beautiful. And this is a little pull off. It's actually just supposed to be like a stop and have lunch kind of place, but I've noticed people camping there, even though there's a big old sign that says no camping. But anyway, <laughs> so we're just going to continue on down here and I'll take you with me. Maybe we'll see a moose, maybe we'll see an animal of some sort, who knows? But just a beautiful day to be in the North Main Woods. And temperature wise, it is 15 degrees now. Let's 
so this down here is one of the worst parts of this road. Uh, there's two pretty bad spots, but this one's not great. So coming down to where you're crossing over uh, Labby Brook, it's just very rough. This whole hill um, and the crossing itself is very rough. So just keep that in mind. Uh, again, right now it's not bad because we have the snow cover, but what happens is this washes out and gets kind of like a rut in the middle of the road. Um, so it makes it more difficult to come up. And if you have low clearance, you're pretty likely to bottom out on that. So this is like my marker point here um, to just kind of make sure I take it slow and don't go too fast because basically from this point all the way down to the checkpoint is really rough. But on that note, the rest of the road from here on out is pretty nice. There's a cute little brook here. I'm just going to show you real quick. And I've actually walked up this whole brook and I've taken quite a few photos of it. Um, on my Facebook I have those. I don't think I did a video. Maybe I did do a video. I'll have to look back. Um, if not, I can definitely do one. It's a very nice, beautiful brook with a bunch of little stepped falls and a little beaver brook down at the bottom. Uh, and then it goes right into the river. So pretty cool. So basically from here on out you have a pretty smooth road. Um, you know it's not a tar road by any means but it's pretty smooth for a woods road. Coming into one of my favorite little scenery places. So just around this corner there are a ton of tamaracks and in the fall it's so pretty because they're all golden. You can kind of see their little brown tinge now, but usually coming up this road, looking back at them, you have the tamaracks there and the spruce behind them. It just looks so pretty. And this is a sand pit, aka range for all of them. And we're just gonna go slowly because we're coming up to where that washout's going to be. So something I thought that might be helpful, um, obviously these woods roads, um, you have to have good tires to travel out here. Whether it's summertime or wintertime or spring, you just can't come out here with shitty tires. You're going to get stuck, you're going to pop a tire, all the things are going to happen. But that being said, even with a really good set of tires, you can still run the chance of getting a flat out here. We have a lot of shale and the roads are maintained basically by grading shale onto the road. And that will cut a tire so fast. So make sure that you do your research on tires, put a good set under your car so that you don't have to deal with that worry. And always be prepared just in case it does happen. Because like I said, even the best tires even a 10 ply, you're gonna get a flat with. So uh, that also goes without saying for winter that you don't wanna come out here with bald tires in the winter. There's nobody out here, there's no cell phone service. Nobody's gonna come to your rescue unless they just so happen to be driving by. So be smart, be prepared. The tires that I'm running, just in case you want an idea of what to purchase, I have Toyo Open Country AT3s for my tires and I recommend them hands down up against any of the studded like a Nokian Nordman or whatever hands down above that so this is the spot where you need to be careful when you come up to this area do not do not do not go straight through I will show you why You don't want to end up in that because it's going to be painful. So you need to stick to the far edge over here because you can see that is so thick and it is so damaging to a vehicle. So just don't go out that way. Stick to the far side and you will be all set. All right guys, we're in the clear. We're on the way home 
and I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to show you the little brook that's down here before we head out completely and I shut the camera off, but so far so this is about the end of the video. Thanks for watching guys. You guys, there's something in the tree. Holy crap, you guys. It's Sam Squanch. It's a Sasquatch. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, that was pretty cool, guys. <laughs> we found Sasquatch. <laughs> Apparently, Sasquatch lives in St. Freud. Because that was right by St. Freud Lake. So this is interesting. We have now found where Sam Squamsh lives. I wonder if he comes down here to go swimming. Do you think he swims? I mean, he has to clean himself. Right? Let's check out this brook. Birch River. Does that sound like a Sam Squamsh swimming hole? Kind of looks like one. <laughs> Alright guys, well that's it today. For sure, for sure, that's the end of the video. I hope you had an awesome day, and I'm glad you joined me. Take care!